Okay, we're gonna work on our fourth craft exercise today. Today we're gonna make our look how to make a cube. So you've gotten a render, maybe a sketch, maybe a CAD model. You've gotten some sort of um, representation that doesn't exist in the physical form yet, and now you want to have a physical version of the thing. So here's one way. There are many ways you can do this, from um, you know cardboard and duct tape to something we're going to do like this. Um, but this way will at least uh, all the software that we'll use is free up to a point, and then there is uh, one piece of software that's connected to a piece of hardware. We're going to use a Silhouette Cameo cutter. I'm only doing that so I don't have to you know manually cut out. Uh, the parts by hand, I can use the machine to cut them out, but it would work exactly the same way if you were going to cut them out with uh, an exacto or even scissors would work. Um, what we're focusing on today is trying to how do we figure out the part shape that we need to cut out to, to design our uh, part that we want to use. So we're going to start back in Tinkercad and we're going to make just a box. Actually, maybe we'll make it a little bit more complicated just to prove the point, but um, I think the cube would, would work fine um, as it's what we're going to do. But uh, let's go to Tinkercad. So here's Tinkercad. I've already created a new blank model. A uh, bodacious Boro is what it uh, changed its name to automatically. Let's give it um, let's give it something else. Craft for form. So that's what we'll call it so that we can find it later on. Um, let's put a box in here. Now I am going to be careful with my units because uh, I do want it to be a certain size uh, so that I can make sure that going from Tinkercad over to the software we're going to use to unfold it over to the cutter I keep a consistent set of units and I'm going to do that by going into edit grid and changing our units to inches just so that we have a, um, a standard set of units across all of our software. Um, so we're going to update the grid. Um, I'm going to make this thing the the one I made over here um, it's a two inch cube so let's make another one of those it's a good size for the sheet of paper that we're working with so just two um, let's get that out of the way so we can get to this one two and then let's make it two inches tall all right so let's zoom out so we can see the thing so now we got a two inch cube now the color um, the way we're gonna do this you could do two different ways now Tinkercad um, is gonna uh, be solid colors, right? You can't really put a picture on one of these surfaces or not. Um, but you could later on outside of Tinkercad when we produce the file that we're gonna end up cutting, you could go into paint or whatever and draw things onto this surface if you wanted to and then print it out and cut it uh, and make the shape you wanna make. I'm just gonna leave it solid though. I'm not gonna worry too much. Um, but let's make it a little more interesting. Let's say, um, Let's say we want to cut a slot in here. Um, so let's make this slot a little bigger than the width of the thing. Uh, something like that. And let's raise it up and maybe a little lower. Drive it over to where it's going to cut this slot out. Well, let's make it a little longer so it cuts everything out. There we go. Okay, so we've got a um, cube with this little notch cut in it. Maybe it's going to be part of a bigger thing. Maybe it's a cell phone stand. I don't know. Um, but we've got this thing. Um, we could even angle this if we wanted to. I don't know. That might make our cuts a little more complicated if we were doing this by hand. Um, but let's, let's tilt it back a little bit if I can get it to... Whoops. If I can grab the tilt. I keep missing. There we go. Um, 20, make a nice around 25. There we go. So we're going to cut this angled slot. So we group it all, to, or select it all, and then group. And now here's our, here's our thing we want to make. So whatever that is, we want to make that in the real world. So one option would be export a STL file that would let us go over to maybe a 3D printer. We'll talk about those in another exercise. Um, how they work and, and what you can and can't do with a 3D printer. We could do that. Um, we're going to do the same thing we did for the render, though, and export an OBJ. So well, we end up with this uh, 
zip file. I'm going to drag it over to my desktop just to be able to find it. I'm going to unzip the thing so that it uh, has uh, the files accessible. Um, it has usually two files in there, one a material file and one that's the geometry file. Um, we're mostly interested in the geometry file. Um, so that's all we need to do with Tinkercad is get our geometry. Now it doesn't have to be Tinkercad either. This, that's what we've been using in the other exercises. So that's what I would use here. Um, but anything where you can go and export this OBJ file um, will work with what we're going to do. Um, Tinkercad is actually kind of nice because it is a little more limited uh, because in the end you do have to figure out how you're going to fold this thing into the geometry that you're trying to create. Uh, so you don't want something super complex for this process um, or it's going to be very tedious to fold it together. Um, okay, so that's our step one. Create something in Tinkercad or some other kind of uh, program to create an OBJ file. Step one. So we did that. Um, we exported it. We saved it. Um, unzipped the file that it created so that we have our actual OBJ file, not this zip file. Um, and I think we're done with... Um, Tinkercad. So let's go over to our next piece of software. Next, um, we're going to go to a piece of software called Pepacura. So let me find that on the internet for us. So go back to here. This, um, it's actually under tamasoft.co.jp slash Pepacura. All I did is I just went to Google search for Pepacura here, Pep Pepa. Um, I didn't even put the designer in there and it's the first thing that came up but it is at a website called tamasoft.co.jp um, and there's a download over here so we're gonna go down download designer 4 um, there is it is a free version and then there is a paid version the paid version is $38 perpetual license with all the future updates and everything you don't actually need the paid version um, for what we're gonna do the free version will do everything we want to do, except it won't let you save your work. So if you do want to work on something that's going to take more than you know, 10, 20 minutes or whatever amount of time you want to leave the program running, then um, it, it will be limited in that you won't be able to export or save. For what we're going to do using the uh, Silhouette Cameo, I do need to be able to export. So I do have the full version of this thing. They look identical except for when you go to save or, or export a file. Um, so the free version is totally free. It doesn't have a, um, a limited amount of time or anything. It's, it's totally free. It just doesn't have the option to save and export. Um, so I downloaded this. Um, there's a nice, pretty handy, actually, how to use and some tips over here. Um, and it's really easy to understand. We'll walk through a, a simple workflow. So we get, we've got that going. Um, so let's go over into Pepacure. I've already installed it and got it running. Um, actually, where do I have it running though? Let's find it. Maybe I've closed it accidentally. Might have to restart it. I think I did actually close it. All right, let's get it rerunning again. Okay. Let's Get it to fill in our window size here so we don't have this weird thing hanging out. All right, so this is what it looks like when you're in Pepacura Designer 4. Um, there's actually three pieces of software. When you download that package that uh, we just looked at, you get Pepacura Designer 4 and a viewer. Um, I'm actually gonna use this Designer 4 and a viewer specifically for the silhouette so that I can send files directly to the uh, it's front-end software to cut the parts out. You won't actually need that unless you happen to have a silhouette or a similar machine where you can go in and, and have the machine do the cutting for you. Um, chances are what your workflow will be, get to this point, open up, so file, um, just open. Let's see if we can find on our desktop, there's our Tinker object that we just created. And uh, open that, there it is. All right, so that looks good. Um, this little warning is um, normal, so don't worry about that. Uh, here, flip faces, uh, back faces are colored dark gray. What that's talking about is are there any that look like they're turned the wrong way? There's, 
Uh, let's see. It won't let me. There's this one here, but I think it's just in a shadow. Um, so I'm going to say no flip. I haven't had to flip them before, so I'm going to say no flip. What this is doing is, is letting you define where's the front of this object. And how you do this is it's got this color on the different sides. Um, and um, you pick which one is the front. So for us, maybe this blue might be the front. I don't even know where the pink one is. Uh, it won't let me rotate to actually find it. I think it might be down here. Let's, let's pick pink. And then what is the bottom? This, this one looks like it is the bottom already. Um, invert model. No, it looks okay. So maybe we did uh, orient it in a weird way. None of this actually matters. It just kind of goes through and identifies where the front and top and right side of the model are, but it doesn't actually hurt if you did them in an odd way. Um, so you could have just clicked through all of that. So we're going to leave this on no. Uh, we're not going to invert the model and finish. Um, this is verifying the boundary. Remember, we made it a two inch by two inch by two inch cube and then cut something out of it. So this does look like it's coming in at the right scale. Um, if maybe you didn't have the model created in inches, maybe you made it in millimeters here, you'd want to make sure that it actually came in the right scale. Um, because um, when you make the thing, so this is one I made with just a uh, two inch cube with no, no cuts in it. Um, when you, when you measure it, let's see if we can get that on there, uh, in the corner. It is two inches on the, each side, so it's pretty accurate on the patterns it produces. So we'll go OK. Um, now, here you have a couple of options. The first thing I like to do is just go to this Unfold button and let it do its thing and see if it comes out good to start with. Um, if it doesn't, then we might have to go in and tweak some things, but a lot of times it does a good job just uh, unfolding it on its own. So I'm going to click Unfold. And you know, that that looks good to me. Um, you, it might be hard to tell, you know, where do these match up with here? You can kind of get an idea over here of, you know, how it's unfolded. So here's a uh, little tab. There's the top and the back. Um, they're connected on the sides over here. This bottom connects the front then the sides together. Um, if you want to see where well, actually, it's all one panel, so we can't... Okay, there you go. You can double-click on a, a panel here, and it'll show you where that panel is on your model. So maybe you want to know, where are these things at? You double-click on it, and it's like, oh, that's the little piece here in the middle. Um, but, you know, it, it looks reasonable to me. It's all one piece. That's nice. Um, and so it doesn't look like it'd be too difficult to assemble. It puts the tabs in there for you. So, on, you know, fold, tab... Uh, a under and glue it to spot B or whatever on, on the one I made over here. I just taped it up um, You could glue, you know a glue stick or tape or whatever you have handy to actually make it hold together um, So this looks reasonable um, What I would do next is now that I have this um, you, What you would do is go in and you just print the pattern, you know, you could uh, print it directly to your printer here You could save it. I uh, sort of save it so you could print a PDF which would uh, at least save it uh, the paper version of this thing. Um, so you, in that way you can save, um, but uh, we don't want to do that. Um, so what you would probably do, unless you have a machine that's going to cut this for you, then you would just print it out and get to work with Exacto. All the little dotted lines are for the fold lines, so you score those, um, and you end up with this Usually they're pretty obvious on how to assemble the things. Um, this one looks like it wouldn't be too difficult to figure out what goes where. Um, you know, it's, get you a straight edge. Maybe a, I would use a metal ruler if I'm not using scissors. Um, just because if you're using a metal ruler and something like an X-Acto, you have less chance of biting into the ruler. You know, if you have a plastic or wooden ruler, there's a good chance you're going to um, bite into the ruler and, and create everything, uh, some kind of mess. So... Use a metal ruler if you're using an X-Acto. Um, and don't try to, you know, if you're doing this in cardstock or, or something like a cereal box, um, thicker material, then don't try to make the cut all at once if you're using an X-Acto. Go over it once and then go back over it again 
um, maybe even a third time, depending on you know how dull you, your exacto blade is. You actually really want a, as new of a blade as you can get for these type of things, so that you don't have to push down on it. You want the blade to do all the work for you, um, and and it's okay if it takes two passes to get through some of the th thicker material. That's normal. Um, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to export this as a vector format oops, vector format DXF file so that I can bring it into the um, the next piece of software. So I'm going to save that. I'll save it on the desktop. We'll save it as our um, box with cut. Now that I'm thinking about it, we might could have opened the, this file directly into the next program. But um, so where I'm going to go right now, you would go and print this thing and start cutting it. Um, where I'm going to go is I'm going to go over to the um, Silhouette Viewer. Pepecura Viewer for Silhouette. Let's see if I can get that. Here it is, Pepecura Viewer 4 for Silhouette Cameo. I'm going to go in there. Um, this one is also not a free piece of software. It, it has a free license. That's what I'm actually using the free one. Um, but uh, the one that comes in the initial download with Peppa Cura is a viewer, but not for Silhouette Cameo. It's just a viewer. Um, so it doesn't do uh, the exporting directly to Silhouette in without any changes. You can get there, but it doesn't. Uh, this one's made to do that. So I'm going to leave this one. Um, the difference in the paid version of this and the free version is that the paid version will only export one file whoops one file um, so it won't do more than one file um, one more than one page so like sometimes you might have a really complicated model that has multiple pages on it um, it will only do one page we only need one page because ours fit all on one page so we're good um, so let's see if we can open our PDO file, so that's the Peppa Cura version of the file we just created. Um, actually, that's not the one we want, though. Um, you know what? We need to go back to Peppa Cura and save this. I say I exported it as a DXF, but uh, we really can just save it. Let's save it as um, this PDO version, so that it's the Peppa Cura format. But uh, let's save it with box with cut out. Okay. Now when we go to silhouette, we can find that. There it is. So this is the uh, processed file from Peppa Cura, but not the DXF. The DXF is a very generic file that would work on any type of cutter. And you could take that directly into um, the software for your cutting machine if you have one. Um, but I'm going to go this route. So here looks exactly the same, right? So that looks good. So what we want to do now is we want to go in and um, you can't, I'm not going to do this, but let's say that you had a complex graphical pattern on here that you wanted to print out and then uh, run that through your cutting machine. Um, there are registration marks that you can use and turn on. Uh, I'm, mine's just solid color, so I'm not going to worry with trying to line up the printed pattern with the cut pattern. I'm just going to cut it out of cardstock. So um, I don't need to do that part. So what I need to do is I need to go in and um, basically go to file. Um, I, well, I, I should make sure that I've got this right size page set up. So um, let's look at our print configuration. That looks all okay um, as far as the thickness of the line. Um, let's see if we have our setup. Oh, well, that's if you want to print it to a uh, printer, like a normal paper printer. That's not exactly what we want. Um, so I think we're good as far as the paper size and everything. Um, trying to remember where that option is right now. Um, settings? Let's see. That's for the registration marks if your printer, if your cutter supports those, and if you are trying to line up a pattern that's printed with the cut pattern. 
Um, I think we're good though. So let's go to export DXF file for the silhouette cameo. So this is one is specific to the machine that I'm going to uh, create uh, cut with. Um, we can leave it with that name box with cut out DXF. So it's on our desktop. We'll save that. Okay. Now we go into the software for the cutting machine. So here we are in that piece of software and we're going to file open and if we go to our desktop we should have let's see oh we have two of them i should have named it something different um, i think it's going to be the one with the 001 after it we'll check yes that looks like it um, so what i have here are all these different colors of lines um, and each color means a different thing so in here, black is a um, cut line. So actually the perimeter is all black, you can see. So it's gonna all be cut. The blues and red are telling the machine to don't cut these out, just mark over them so that you score them so it's easier to fold. So I need to go in to this option up here to send. This is talking about send it to the printer. And I need to look and see what lines are going to get cut at what um, level so actually let's go back to our design if you wanted to change any of these you could i don't actually need to change them though um, let's see send to printer I... whoops it is there it goes it's giving me a preview Right now, there's no line selected, so nothing to cut. So we don't need that part. Um, let's see. I do want to make sure that I'm on the right size page. I am on a letter sheet. That's the size cardstock that I have, so I need to make sure. I think by default, it's trying to do a uh, 12 by 12 sheet, because that's what a lot of these machines cut is 12 by 12 sheets of vinyl or whatever. Um, so I do want to make sure I'm on letter size and it, and it does give me a preview of I'm actually on something that looks like a letter size sheet of paper. Um, all right, so let's go to our line here and it's showing me black, blue, and red lines. So uh, it does have this option for green lines. I don't even, well, the green lines are the registration marks. I don't even want to deal with those. So I'm not going to deal with registration marks. Um, the red lines, I want those not to be cut. I don't want it cut right here. I want those to be a score line. So cardstock is the material, but I want this to be a score. Blue lines, I want those to be a score. Um, now I am going to go, let's go back to the red lines. So I'm using plain cardstock. And then down in this area, it tells me um, that I'm cutting at a level one so this goes to the machine there's a uh, a little cutting blade that you can set at different depths one is shallow so or, or it's a, the slightest the smallest amount of blade sticking out of the cutter so i'm gonna i do want that because i just I, this is not a cut line this is just score i only want to make one pass i don't want it to score multiple times um, and then i wanted a relatively low force maybe i'll bump the speed up a little bit so it's level five um or speed five rather I don't even know what the units are on that, but it's uh, faster than four. Um, blue, I want to do the same thing because it's also a score line. So same material, level, cut, one, force, 15, speed. I'm going to move that to five, one pass. Um, now, after these two scores, I need to insert a pause because I'm going to need to take the blade out, change it to a different depth. So I'll put a pause in here and then do the cutting. So this one I do want cut. Um, the machine that I'm using, um, level three didn't do quite enough, so I'm gonna bump that up to four, and I'm gonna do two passes. So it's actually gonna trace over everything to cut twice um, to give a better chance of it actually being cut. Um, I'm gonna check this again one more time. That looks reasonable. Um, all the blue lines look like they should be folds. The black lines are all on the outer, perimeter which should be cut uh, the red lines are fold they're just are folding in the other direction but that's okay um, 
as far as the machine is concerned, it's going to do the same thing. And um, it looks like we're ready on the machine side, so it's plugged in. Um, we need to go over to the machine and load some paper into it. So let's go and check that out. Um, it's over here. Okay, so what I've got over there now is uh, I've got a cutting mat and our cardstock, and we're just going to load it into the machine. The first cuts are, aren't actually cuts, they are um, scores, so I need to change that. Uh, cutting level to a level one. Now I've done that, um, so it's on level one. I'm gonna go ahead and send the data over to the machine is plugged in for a USB cable. You can use a USB drive also. This one's just connected with a cable so I don't have to go back and forth with uh, thumb drives. Um, so this should do the first two scores, one pass each. It's a little loud. <laughs> so it's just going over all the places where I'm gonna need to make a fold later. Okay, um, now it's reached the pause that it was on. This is where I need to change to a level four um, so that I can go in and actually make it cut instead of just um, scoring. Okay, now I will resume, and it should actually make two of these. Um, the last time I cut with the, the gray one, um, one pass didn't cut all the way through, so I'm gonna do two passes this time, um, leaving the mat in the cutting machine so that uh, it should go over the exact same route that it took the first time. And again, None of this part is necessary. It's just I wanted to show you if you do happen to have access to one of these machines, then um, the, the process of creating the uh, cutting is much simpler um, and neater so that you don't have as much work to do with the X-Acto or scissors or whatever you're working with. Um, if you don't have one of these, it's totally fine. X-Actos and scissors work just as well as this thing. All right, so it says it is done. We'll go get our page out and check out and see what it actually looks like.
Okay, so let's move some things out of the way. Um, last time I did need the Exacto to make some trimming uh, areas, but uh, let's see what we have. So that looks like it cut out really nicely. So there's our shape and there's our you know leftovers. And what we want now is to not have cut through on our score lines. They look kind of deep, but so I'm a little worried, but let's give it a try and... Oh, good, they're, they're held together. All right. So now we've got... Let's zoom out a little so that we can see the whole pattern. There is our little pattern. Now, unfortunately, it's kind of dark. I don't know if we'll be able to see. You can, yeah, you can see the score lines on there if I shine a little more direct light on him. Um, so you can see where it is going in and put score lines on everything that needs to be folded. Um, so I'm gonna fold on this a little bit and see if we can turn it into our shape. I don't know the correct order to fold these in, so um, we, we'll have to experiment a little bit. I know that this guy needs to go down in here somehow. Let's see, here we're getting somewhere. These folds are actually the opposite of, you know, they're, they're fold, meant cut to fold this way, but they need to fold the other way. So I'm gonna fold them over, hopefully not break them. I have a bone folder, which is used for, you know, origami and things like that. You don't have to have something fancy, just something that you can, you know, get these folds going the right way will work. Um, so anything to get them the way you want them. All right, let's see. Let's fold that tab under, get under that tab. Um, this one definitely might could benefit from some glue to hold everything together. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to try and tape some of this in here. Because um, I don't want to wait for glue to dry or anything. So let's see if we can get all of that in the right way and kind of tape down, I think. If we get one of them in place, then that'll help with uh, holding everything else together. Just gotta figure out where in place is. Maybe like that, that should be on the inside. All right, um, that should at least help hold things in place. Maybe you don't even have a printer available. You know, you gotta try and do this. I think this process would still help because it would let you um, visualize what pattern you needed to create on your own. Even if you can't actually print the pattern out um, on, on your uh, printer, maybe you don't have one, then you could at least get an idea of, oh, okay, that's a way to unfold this object and create something 3D. Uh, so even if you don't have access to a printer, don't think that this would be totally useless to you. You could use it um, in the process of figuring out how to uh, create the pattern that you need. Now we're getting somewhere. Gotta fold these little tabs under and get them in there. Again, this would be better with you know gluing all these tabs together and the tape is pretty ugly that I'm using, so uh, we're just making do. And let's tape that corner up some. Oh, that's probably too big of a piece. Let's find, put that one over here. Let's see, something on those edges would be nice. Let me get that one in and I think we're done. Whoops, kind of punched through. All right, 
Um, you know, it might could use some. I kind of want to put some in there. Maybe. There we go. Something like that. There. You know, other than the tape being on it, it does, you know, look like what we put in Tinkercad. Got a little, little missing spot there. But uh, you can create some relatively complex shapes um, using this process. So um, I think it would be worth experimenting with. Um, you know, don't go too crazy on what you're trying to make here. Keep it relatively simple. There are a lot of features also uh, that we did not talk about in uh, Peppa Cura. You can do some editing in there. Um, it can make multi-part, uh, you know, where it pulls out some pieces and draws them separately and you glue them together later. Um, you can round over corners. You know, it's kind of hard to round over corners in Tinkercad, um, but you can do that in Peppa Cura. So you can make this geometry and then maybe, maybe you wanted this to be rounded you could select this feature in Peppa Cura and round it there so kind of round it over in Peppa Cura and the more complex shapes you create in there it is going to be harder to you know glue them together or tape them or whatever you're using but um, it is possible so um, that will give you a new activity a new thing to try out um, again even if you don't have a printer and even if you don't have the Cameo uh, cutting machine or, or any of those type, uh, the Cricut or anything like that. Um, actually, I don't know if this would work with the Cricut anyway because I think it uh, uses a different workflow. So I think it does have to be something like the Silhouette. Um, okay, thank you.